This one's called On a New Street. I put my bed against the wall of my new apartment for no particular reason other than it fit best there. It was snug in the corner, so the head of the bed was against one wall and the left side stretched out against another. In the center of the room, it would have taken up too much space, but pushed up against the side left room, the side left room on the floor for towels I laid down to dry, sometimes myself for yoga or squats or exhaustion, spillover of lotions from the shelves above, shoes and cords and papers and other things that go on floors. I rested my back against the wall on the left side of my bed to read and to write, and sometimes to skim articles about skincare on my computer, which is technically reading, but feels different than reading. Twice in the middle of the night, I woke myself up by rolling into the wall and smashing my nose hard against its tan paint. I had just moved across the country from a hot, wet climate to a cold, dry climate, and for this reason, I was often cold and dry, which is why there was so much lotion. The heat did not work in the living room for reasons I do not know, because there was a vent in that room, as well as a thermostat. The thermostat even clicked on when you turned the plastic knob above 55 degrees, but no heat came out the vents. My room, on the other hand, had heat but it only had two settings, off and 90 degrees. To be clear, it had many settings, temperature and temperatures in a range you would normally expect in a thermostat, but once you turned it on and heard it click to life, it heated straight to 90 degrees no matter where you had set the knob. But on particularly cold nights, which for me were particularly hot nights, I would sleep on top of my comforter with many layers of blankets. I say on these nights, although any night you can find me sleeping on top of my comforter with many blankets, I think it is a good shortcut for not making the bed and that the comforter is comfortable to sleep on. I have many blankets for all different levels of warmth and layering. One gray blanket and one red blanket, both from my mother and both very soft. One old quilt that my great grandmother sewed, which has little girls with braids on it. I always remember this because when I told my mother I wanted to take the quilt to Colorado, she said, you want to take it? I know about this quilt. Do you even know about this quilt? It's covered in little girls with braids. Do you even know about the little girl with the braids? And I think about that moment often and usually with fondness. I also have one newer quilt that is quite small and easy to fold up. A group of women made it for my grandmother when she had cancer so she could take it to chemotherapy. On the corner, they sewed her a note. I find this to be sweet. I like to fold up this quilt and take it to the movie theater. I have one twin-sized burnt orange fleece that my aunt got me upon my acceptance to the University of Texas. I used to dislike this blanket, but in the cold of Colorado, away from my family, I have found it to be comforting. And finally, one small fleece blanket covered in delicate cartoon dogs that I purchased for $1 at a Walmart in New Orleans during the week I scraped paint off houses and met my best friend. We shared a twin bed for the entirety of the week. And so on nights that are particularly hot in my room, I layer the large fleece blanket with the soft gray blanket, and this would be enough to put me to sleep. However, around 5 a.m., I would always wake up very, very hot. It was always around 5 a.m. because my alarm went off at 6, and it would be too much to ask that I have more than one hour left to sleep. So on these mornings, I would press myself against the wall on the left side of my bed because it would always be exceptionally cold. Sometimes, if I was feeling brave, I would press the outside of my left calf against the wall too. As time in my new apartment expanded, I found myself going to sleep, back turned to, to the room, face pressed against the cold of the wall until it felt the same temperature as my skin. If I found myself asleep in the middle of the bed, I reached out so my fingertips could graze the wall and I could know that my bed had not moved in the middle of the night, as it was not prone to do, but I was prone to worrying it might. And so, I don't know if this is a love poem to the wall on the left side of my bed, or if it's a poem to all the blankets I have collected that I fear I will never get rid of, even as they fall apart, or if it's a poem about how much my body aches for a vast open hill country and sticky hot air, or if it's just a poem about moving and how you do dumb things in all the places you live, and hopefully you don't forget them. Thank you.